So I chose San Francisco for my capstone project. I've been to San Francisco before and I've seen some of the engineering with my own eyes. So I thought it'd be interesting to explore San Francisco in its entirety. So this is an overview map of the entire city of San Francisco. All the most important locations that I talk about in the project are pinned on the map uh, taken from Google Earth. On the left, starting all the way in the bottom left, we have Pacifica Beach, which isn't technically part of San Francisco, but it's important to the project. And as we move up, there's the Oceanside Water Treatment Plant, the Westside Pump Station, San Francisco Zoo, and the Great Highway and Ocean Beach, with, of course, the Golden Gate Bridge and the Embarcadero and the San Francisco Bay. So this is a close-up of three out of the five main concerns and considerations I addressed. Uh, the Oceanside Water Treatment Plant on the bottom and the zoo and the Westside Pump Station. So the zoo and the infrastructure makes it um, especially vulnerable as it's so close to the sea level. And I said three out of the five because there's two others. Uh, there's the Embarcadero and the Great Highway, which you'll see in the next picture. So there is the Great Highway um, right here. And this is actually a close-up of Ocean Beach. And I thought it was worth including a close-up here because I talk about this quite a bit in this project. Uh, but you can see there's little to no space on the beach that is not built up to protect the buildings behind. Uh, it starts with dunes at the bottom, and as you travel up there's a seawall, and then more dunes, and then another seawall. So this is the a, a topographic profile of San Francisco that starts directly in the center of the city and travels west, eventually ending in the Pacific Ocean. I have a topographic map of the entire city later in the presentation, but this shows you uh, just how much change in elevation San Francisco really has. It's pretty amazing to me how quickly the elevation changes in this city. So this is, um, this is Ocean Beach. So dune restoration is very common along the beach. The picture on the left is before, and the picture on the right is after the Army Corps of Engineers constructed a new dune to defend the infrastructure located along Ocean Beach. Uh, the infrastructure defended, I already talked about some of it, but there's the Great Highway, the Oceanside Water Treatment Plant, the Westside Pump Station, and the San Francisco Zoo. And uh, credit can be given to Thomas Pendergast here uh, as he took the pictures before and after the construction was done. So this is a section of Pacifica Beach, which is not technically in San Francisco, but it's close enough. And this emphasizes the need for managed retreat as erosion continues taking land away. These man-made structure or these man-made areas are very close to collapsing, as you can see uh, on the right, and it's circled on the left. And um, the left shows the eroded land slowly approaching the man-made structures, and on the right is a zoomed-in picture of the same section that shows the scale of the erosion. So the right picture was provided by Duncan Sinfields um, from a white, uh, YouTube video that we watched in class, actually. So um, I was unable to make this picture less blurry, so I apologize for that, but uh, I thought it was important to include. So much of the graphic doesn't apply to San Francisco itself, but uh, it applies to the bay, and it's important to recognize all the work being done to protect the bay, and we still have problems with flooding. So it's, uh, just take a look at all the various lines uh, to get an idea for the strategies being used here. So I included the map on the left, to sh uh, which is provided by NOAA, to show the places closest to sea level um, are not necessarily the most vulnerable in this city. Uh, the city has a really interesting topography, uh, which you can see on the right, and it makes it super easy for humans to prepare for incoming hazards. And you can see the stretch of the beach, um, of Ocean Beach, on the left there, right around the middle. Um, it's just slightly vulnerable. And then there's dark red sections which show high vulnerability, and then the white slash light red sections that show low vulnerability. And the topography map was made by uh, Brian Stokel. So the map on the left here shows the San Francisco city inundation upon 10 feet of sea level rise. And the map, um, the map was made by NOAA interactive sea level rise viewer uh, because I found the exact map when I was doing my research, but it's cleaned up by SF planning. And then the map on the right shows sea level rise projections provided by the state of California and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. And by 2100, rise projections range from one foot uh, to 12 feet, which is a huge scale. So about six to eight feet of sea level rise is expected by 2100. 
um, as said by California, and only three feet is expected as said by the Army Corps of Engineers. So the graph does a really good job at representing the uncertainty surrounding sea level rise projections. And uh, the graph on the right was made by SF Lifelines Council. So this is another piece of information provided by SF Lifeline Council. Um, slide credits can be given SF Lifeline Council and not to me, just to be clear. Uh, so assuming that there's three feet of sea level rise in the San Francisco Bay, this is about how much of the Embarcadero will be inundated with water. So the vulnerability really emphasizes the need to build the Embarcadero or to rebuild uh, a better Embarcadero seawall, which is actually in the process of being done. So um, here's the physical summary. So San Francisco is located on an active right lateral transform plate boundary known as the North American Pacific Plate Boundary. And tectonic movement along this plate boundary causes earthquakes and tsunamis. Um, San Francisco is a peninsula and it has both rocky coastlines and sandy beaches. So I would call it an emergent wave dominant coastline. And hazards include severe storms and flooding, tsunamis, sea level rise, and earthquakes. And I would rate it a medium risk to hazards. So here we have the human social summary. Uh, the population is a little over 800,000. I won't get into all the numbers here, but it's about 44.9% white, 34.3% Asian. And uh, the biggest group uh, of eight, or biggest age group is the 22, 25 to 24 aged people, and that's about 37.5% of the population. The building breakdown is uh, hotels, industrial buildings, retail, high-rise buildings, manufacturing plants. Uh, they manufacture ships, aerospace products, electronics, food and apparel. And then there's the landmarks, of course, the Golden Gate Bridge, Alcatraz, uh, USS Pampanito, the uh, Mission District, California Academy of Modern Science, and the list goes on. So the engineering and infrastructure summary. The infrastructure, there's the Golden Gate Bridge, the Bay Bridge, Embarcadero, the Great Highway, Route 101. Uh, there's a ton of piers and four ports. Uh, the water infrastructure includes what the West Side Pump Station, Oceanside Treatment Plant, and the water supply from the ground, and a little bit from reservoirs outside the city. And then the engineering, there's hard structures like the O'Shaughnessy Seawall, the Embarcadero Seawall, Norwegian Seawall, and the Sea Dikes. And there's also soft structures. The, there's various plants and grasses, plants and grasses planted on dunes uh, to contain sand. And there's also fences that help limit erosion. And then there's dune restoration. So the vulnerability and planning summary. Um, there's an old population of about 13.6% of the San Francisco population and then there's the poverty which is about 10.1 percent of san francisco and this these groups are pretty vulnerable but depending on their uh their relation to sea or to low sea level areas they may not be at risk uh, living at low sea level or low elevation is not super common in san francisco uh, because much of the city is built at a higher elevation but if they do live or if someone lives close to uh, low elevation they are definitely vulnerable and then as far as planning, there's the Embarcadero Seawall pro Program, uh, advancing living shorelines in the bay, marsh restoration, depaving parks, building codes, planned retreat and land use plans, uh, increased beach renourishment, and dune management. And last but not least, we have the Resiliency Recommendations Summary. Uh, number one is beach renourishment and dune management. I would do this one first. Uh, it's pretty easy and not super expensive. Uh, it's only temporary as erosion takes from it, but we do our best to limit erosion. Number two is expedited managed retreat in Ocean Beach and Pacifica Beach. So if we move the buildings away, it will reduce population vulnerability and create opportunity for flood mitigation. Number three is a focus on ecological restoration funding. So restoring wetlands, waterways, parks, and they improve flood resiliency. Number four is uh, begin construction on a movable flood barrier. So uh, this is an example of a smart building technique, but um, something like the Mose Barrier, the Thames Barrier, and I would do it right where the Golden Gate Bridge is to protect the bay from flooding. And then number five is to increase green space, as this will create habitats as well as recreation, and it will reduce incoming wave energy. And then this is my references slide. Thank you very much.